Hey, 42 here. At some point in human history, we realised that if we left the cave door unlocked, someone might come along and steal our collection of bearskins and our favourite rock. So, what was the solution? We couldn't be everywhere at once, so perhaps we needed a group of people to watch our cave, prevent rock theft and make sure no one rode a mammoth too quickly for a pedestrian zone. Unfortunately, although rock theft did decline, this new cave watching group became suspiciously well dressed and were getting all of the best bits of antelope at the nightly barbecue. Police corruption has been an issue throughout the ages because as the Roman poet Juvenal once wrote, who watches the watchmen? Good policing undoubtedly makes our lives better and easier, but it's a difficult balancing act to get it right. So. Whether it's making money on the side, avoiding blame for suspicious wrongdoings, or a genuine belief that the end really does justify the means. Today, we look at four massive police cover-ups from around the world. Los Angeles has a lot of gangs, and if it wasn't for all the drugs, violence and murder, the amount of diversity on show would almost make you proud. There's the Bloods, the Crips, the Watching and other triads, the unimaginatively named White Power Group, Nazi Lowriders, MS-13 and plenty of other Latino gangs. There's also the terrifying Los Angeles War Gamers, whose army of Dark Elves and endless grain resource cards have terrorised the board gaming community for years. You can take their lives, but no one will ever take their virginities. To tackle this smorgasbord of criminal subgroups, the LAPD assigned each division an anti-gang team called Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums, or Crash, which began in 1979. But when officer Kevin Gaines of the Rampart Division was shot by an undercover police officer in 1997, the subsequent investigation revealed a police unit that didn't just have one or two bad apples, the whole barrel was rotten. The Rampart scandal revealed that the Rampart crash team had planted false evidence, performed unprovoked shootings and beatings, stolen and dealt narcotics, lied in court, committed bank robbery and more. In trying to give gang members a lengthy rap sheet, they had actually written their own. A number of officers moonlighted as security for the hip hop record label Death Row Records, which had links to the Bloods gang. It's possible that some of these officers were even involved in the execution of Biggie Smalls. The LAPD had a real mess to clean up and eventually paid out $125 million in civil lawsuits. They also disciplined around 25 officers and a handful went to jail, including Rafael Perez who snitched on all the other officers in exchange for a reduced sentence. On 15th of April 1989, the worst disaster in British sporting history happened at Hillsborough Football Stadium in Sheffield, when 96 Liverpool fans were crushed to death during an FA Cup semi-final game. Nowadays, every team in the top two leagues must have an all-seater stadium, largely in reaction to this tragedy. On the day, two pens with Liverpool fans were already very full, but there were still lots of fans outside the turnstiles when the game was close to kickoff. These fans were all directed into the overcrowded pens, and the ensuing jam of people crushed everyone so tightly that many suffocated. Initially, the fans were blamed. The Sun newspaper, owned by Australian media vampire Rupert Murdoch, printed a front page headlined, The Truth, that claimed that Liverpool fans had pickpocketed the victims, urinated on police, and even prevented them from giving CPR to the injured. All of these were proved to be completely false. And the Sun newspaper is still boycotted across the city of Liverpool to this day. But it wasn't just the Sun who were wrong. The police, led by David Duckenfield on the day, spent decades pushing the blame onto drunken Liverpool fans and fans without tickets. Duckenfield claimed that the fans forced their way in through a large exit gate, when in fact he himself had ordered it to be opened to relieve the bottleneck that was building up outside, ignoring the fatal crush happening inside the gate. In 2012, an independent report was finally published, bringing the truth to light, and in August this year, an investigation began into Duckenfield, revealing that the police force's utter disregard for people's safety on that tragic day 
when 96 innocent spectators were crushed to death because of negligence. Now we head to the heart of the Caucasus, the beautiful country of Georgia. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Georgia was in a pretty bad state. It may have had hundreds of stunning mountains, a rich history of winemaking, and a national food called Kachapuri, which is a bread boat filled with cheese and topped with a fried egg. But sadly, in this sick and twisted world, that is simply not enough. Large gangs controlled much of the country, but that all changed when Mikhail Saakashvili became the president in January 2004, following the non-violent Revolution of Roses in November 2003. He promised to end police corruption and gang control, and he did, by scrapping the entire police force and starting again from scratch. A fellow revolutionary, Batu Kuteli, explained the reason for this radical overhaul when he compared tackling corruption to, quote unquote, building a ship in the middle of the sea while sailing, whilst also learning how to sail, and while you have somebody attacking and trying to sink your ship. Excellent point. You can see why they got the boat. I mean, vote. The trouble was, his new force were a little too motivated, and before too long, corruption was completely gone because they basically locked everyone up, ending up with the highest per capita prison population in Europe. In March 2006, police claimed to have prevented a riot by the inmates in Tbilisi prison, organized by gang leaders, but they did it by preventing seven inmates from continuing to live, as well as injuring 17. There was also mass surveillance, telephone tapping and torture. Now, there are a number of big British secrets, such as why do we eat so much Marmite? And why do so many English people play all of America's superheroes in films? But the story of Mau Mau was and is one of the closest guarded secrets, where the actions of the colonial police and military in Kenya were mostly suppressed for over 50 years. In the early 1950s, the native Kenyan population, particularly the Kikuyu people, thought that the British might relax their occupation a little, especially after the Kenyans had fought for them in World War II. Obviously, they had never been overly delighted at being colonised in the first place. People are often not as grateful as you'd think when you move into their house and eat all their food, even if you do have an excellent collection of moustaches. A rebel group called the Mau Mau appeared, killing around 200 Europeans and colonial sympathisers. The Brits used propaganda to paint the Mau Mau as evil boogeymen, framing their activity as part of a civil war among the Kikuyu. In order to protect loyal Kikuyu and control the rebels, they moved over 1 million Kenyans into village camps that were effectively giant gulags with living conditions dependent on how loyal they believed each person to be. They used white settlers to control the camps and there was mass scale torture and executions. It's shocking enough on its own, but when you consider that this was less than a decade after the horrors of Nazi Germany, the hypocrisy was probably the main reason why the stories and documents were buried. It's thought that over 20,000 Kenyans died and some 5,000 more were tortured. Barack Obama's grandfather, Hussein Anyano Obama, had pins forced into his fingernails and his testicles squeezed between rods whilst two other men with him were castrated. You see, the UK and US really do have a special relationship. We go way back. It wasn't until 2011 that a landmark court case of Kenyan victims against the British government brought much of the evidence to light. It turned out that many documents had been kept in a government building in Hanslope Park, probably brought back by colonials who disagreed with what had happened and wanted it on record that they had complained. So, it just goes to show, you never can trust the men in blue. And remember, you always have a voice, so if you're being oppressed, speak up for yourself. Unless the men in blue are pointing guns in your face, then you should probably shut the hell up. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more, 42. Kowloon Walled City was home to over 33,000 people, all crammed into a measly six acres. But there's a man equally as despicable as Adolf Hitler, yet very few people even know of his existence. 